All right, guys, this is a new scene from Factory IO. This is one of the pre-configured scenes called The Sorter. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll just start this guy up and then we'll walk through how this guy works. So I've got a control panel on the front here. Uh, I've got an auto manual switch here. So I'm gonna switch this into automatic. I'm gonna hit the start push button and we'll start the process. What will happen is I'll have uh, bases. So here I have a base, I'll have lids and I'll have blanks coming along this conveyor here. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to have any of the green bases or lids going down here, any of my blue bases or lids going down here, and my blanks will be going down the first one here. And for each of them, I will keep track of uh, a counter here on my control panel. But let's start this rock and rolling. We'll take a look. So this is the green. This should be going down to this one right here. Beautiful. Blanks are going down the first one. And blues are going down the second one. So that green one should be going down the third conveyor there. Beautiful. Nice. Again, another green going to the end there. The blue is going to go to the center one. Now, this is an issue we're going to have to talk about. Blanks down the first one. And again, this one's going to go to the second one. And hopefully when, not this one, but this one goes through, it's going to push this piece down to the remover here. Ah, very nice. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so um, each one of these is also keeping track of how many components are going down each of the chutes here. So as a component comes through, it's being seen by a vision sensor. So it has a, a diffuse sensor right there. It's providing us an, with us an analog output here, a 0 to 10 volt signal. And that 0 to 10 volt signal is determining which component is coming through and then giving us a clear count on which shoot each of these components are going down. So we'll just scroll back out here as the next component comes through. It's a green, so it should count this one up by one. There you can see it's nine. And again, if we zoom in again, this next green here will increment this by one to give us 10. Beautiful, the blank will increment this one up by one. And the blue will increment this one up by one. Very nice. And if we stop it at any point uh, and we want to reset the counters, uh, then we've set up the, the reset button right here. So I also have a reset button. And when I hit this guy, all of these values will turn to zero. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, if we scram, scan back out again and I start this one more time, then the stop push button will stop the process. Okay, so it'll bring it to a stop there. The only issue is uh, with my program is that I don't have this set up so this will continue on to uh, my last output there. So watch what happens when I hit the, the push button again. <laughs> Zero. So I've got to work on my, uh, my program so that if I hit the stop push button, that it will continue on to where it was supposed to go. Again, if I hit the e-stop button, everything comes to a stop. But I need to work on my program because if I hit the e-stop uh, the e again and then hit my start, this component right here is just going to drop down to the end there. So you can see that I've got some components that are just sitting on the floor there. So the program's not bad, but it still needs some work. The other thing that uh, happened was we had a, oh, right, right here. See this guy right here? Um, this sensor right here is a retroreflective sensor. And so the light goes out, hits the reflector, and then goes back to the sensor on the other side. But you can see that 
the way that this is mounted in the, the animation there, sometimes the component that's coming by is missed by that sensor. See, that one got caught. Uh, but this one right here isn't being caught. I've tried to move this down, but I'm not able to like move this down by small increments there. So that's one of the issues that I found with the, the simulator. I mean, aside from the issue that I have with my program where I hit the stop or the e-stop, uh, in that sometimes a component is missed there. So what we're going to have to do is just give this guy a little shove. There it goes. Excellent, and everything's rocking and rolling. Okay, let me pause here. I'll bring up the, uh, the Siemens TIA portal that I'm using for this program, and you'll see a little bit of the, the programming that I've, made, that I've made use of to make this guy work. Okay, so before going to the PLC program, we can't have a video on the sorter and then have components just flying off the end of the conveyor there when we hit the stop push button. So made some minor adjustments to my PLC program. Uh, I'm now in the automatic mode again. Let's hit the start and we'll get these components to keep going. We'll start the sequence again. This one's a green, so it should go all the way to the end. Looks good. Keep going, buddy, all the way, all the way, all the way. Then this guy is going to go again to the end. Beautiful. So let's see whether we can stop the process. Now remember, prior to this uh, change in the PLC program, this base right here we just keep going and fly off the end of the conveyor. So when I hit the start push button, hopefully um, this will turn in and push this down into this slider. Come on buddy, let's hit the start push button. Here we go. Ah, gorgeous. Beautiful. Blank should go down the first one. Green goes to the end. Beautiful. And then we'll just make sure that the blue goes to the center one. Beautiful. Very nice. And again, we're still keeping track of how many components go down each of the slots. Nice. Okay, let's have that running in the background. Uh, let me pause for two seconds. Now I'll bring up my uh, PLC program. So the PLC that I'm using is the Siemens Step 7 1200. I'm using the TIA portal here to do my programming. Um, and so what I've done is, again, on previous videos, I've set up uh, three separate portions to my program. So I have my work bits, my inputs, and my outputs. My work bits would contain uh, stuff like my auto manual going back and forth between each of those modes there. Uh, possibly making use of a start one shot for, uh, for my manual mode. Um, once I hit uh, the start push button, then I've got a run mode enabled. And I've got my e-stop and my stop in there. So this is my standard like three wire circuit with my start, my stop, and my run mode with the holding contact. And those guys, that run mode is now controlling uh, both the start and the stop light, the illuminated push button uh, for the, both the start and the stop. Uh, below I've got uh, a reset mode as well. So every time that I hit the reset, it's gonna reset everything uh, for my counters there. So those are all my working bits. I've got uh, my inputs here. I'm making use of, come on buddy. Uh, making use of uh, a comparator here, uh, as long as it's in a range. So that vision sensor there is that uh, diffuse sensor that's looking at each of the different components coming through. Each of the different components is gonna give a different value between uh, zero to 10 volts. And that value is coming in and I'm, I'm taking a look at that value right here. Uh, that is now going to set off a, um, like an internal memory bit here, and I can use that in a number of different portions of my program. Um, once it's there, I'm going to wait for, looks like uh, 1.2 milliseconds. That worked out with the timing of each of the components there. And that stops the entry conveyor so that um, on, as this component keeps going to the appropriate chute, then I don't have other components flying in behind. So. This guy will continue on, go down the second chute there, and then once it's come past this retroreflective sensor, then the next component can come through. Uh, what else do I have? So I've just separated all my, my inputs there. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, the again, that vision sensor giving me a 0 to 10 volt signal. And depending on what the value is, I'm having a memory bit correspond to either a blank product 
or uh, a blue base or lid or a green base or lid and having it go down the appropriate uh, chute. So those are all my inputs. My outputs are the things that I'm actually turning on. And so there I have uh, my entry conveyor and my exit conveyor being controlled uh, by my run mode. Uh, anytime that I need to stop the entry conveyor, I have a memory bit here that's gonna do that for me. Uh, then for each of those guys, I've got um, the sorter belt and the sorter turn for um, shoot number one, for shoot number two, and for shoot number three. Uh, and then I made use of a counter, so on each of these guys, anytime that uh, a green base or lid is there, then it's going to increment by one. And I'm sending that signal over to uh, my factor IO. My factor IO is looking, in this case, at um, QW 104, 102, and 100. And those guys are all corresponding to the factor IO. When you go to the, uh, to the file and you go to drivers, um, all of your inputs and outputs are already set up for you. So I've got uh, an integer, integer value for my vision sensor, that's that diffuse sensor, give my, giving me a zero to 10 volt signal for whichever component is coming through. And then for each of my counters, I have integer values going to each of those counter displays for the factor IO. So it's just a, this is a really phenomenal project to walk, walk through. It's, uh, it's quite hard to, uh, to put together. Um, and every time, again, that you're working through something, then, you know, there's minor things that are going to screw up. You're going to have to change the timing of your timer. Um, you're going to have to figure out how to make sure that that uh, counter value actually goes to the, to the display on your, uh, on your box here, right? So how do you get an accurate value here that corresponds to the, each of the components going through on each of the different shoots? So I've just, I always separate my stuff into uh, inputs, outputs, and work bits, and then I can go to each specific portion uh, and control each part. There are an, like a thousand different ways uh, to do this. So um, don't copy down uh, what I have. Maybe this gives you a, a brief understanding or a, a good starting point uh, to go through on your program, uh, but I'm not gonna give away everything here. Um, once you've done, this thing and you've got it rocking and rolling, then you may want to try uh, to make use of the shift register. So once you've got this program rocking and rolling and everything's working properly, um, then save it, give yourself a pat on the back, show it to your instructor. Um, and then you may want to go check out uh, Gary Schwartz's video. This is a great video on the exact same uh, sorter project from Factory IO. He's making use of the shift register though. He's using a Automation Direct BRX PLC. But he's taking it that next step using a shift register so that every time a component comes through, he can track it all the way through to each of the different shoots. So uh, once you've done this video, go and check out his, uh, his video. So again, it's Gary, G-A-R-R-Y, S-H-O-R-T-T. Go check out his video on uh, PLC programming example, sorting station, shift register. All right guys, hopefully that gives you a pretty good understanding of, uh, of this unit from Factory IO. If we just scroll this guy over, we'll have it running one more time just to stop the video here. So are we in the run mode yet? Yeah, let's get rock and rolling and then hopefully everything's still working on mine. Very nice. And again, depending on uh, the sequence that your professor is getting it to do, um, you know, there may be blues here and greens here and blanks here. Um, you can switch it up as you go. There's other things you can have happen too. Like if you have a jam or something, maybe you can have uh, your lights flashing to indicate that a jam has occurred. Maybe you can take these values here from your counters and go into an Excel file and keep track of not just uh, each of the components that are going down each of the chutes, but individual bases, lids, and blank components for both the green and the blue. All right, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to give it a, give it a like. Uh, if you like my videos, then please uh, subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll see you in the next video.